Today we're going to talk about part one of our lesson on constructors in Java. So first, what is a constructor? Well, it's important to understand that constructor is activated only when you create an instance of a class. If you run a main method in a class, or you access a static method from the class itself, that does not make a constructor. Only when we create an object, also called an instance of a class, does the constructor run. Second, a constructor behaves much like a non-static method. Third, constructors are used to set up a new object after the object has been created. So let's look at this example. We've got a class robot and a class space station. We have a class variable, fuel source, and an instance variable name. And we have our constructor here. A constructor will have the word public, then the name of the class, then parentheses that may have nothing inside or may have parameters. So the first thing that happens is we set the field fuel source equal to electricity. The next thing we're doing in this example is calling a method. We can call a method from constructors. Random name. So what does random name do in this case? It just generates a random number from 1 to 3 and sets the name field to either Bender, HAL 9000, or Gort based on whether this is 1, 2, or 3. Okay, let's look over at Space Station. In our main method, we declare a variable of type robot called 1. And then we create a new instance of robot. So We'll set fuel source equal to electricity, and we'll generate a random name and put it in the name field. Same thing with our variable 2 and our variable 3. Okay, next, let's look at a, a situation where we have overloaded constructors. What overloaded constructors are is we have two or more constructors, and the compiler differentiates them because they have different parameters. Now, in our example here, under factory, we create a new variable called run 1 of type robot2, and then we create a new instance of robot2, and we pass the string r2d2. Now, the compiler looks and says, okay, we've got one argument, and it's a string, so we have to find a constructor that has one argument that's a string. And here's a constructor right here. So what it does is it says fuel source is equal to electricity, and then it takes the string that we passed in new name and sets our name field equal to the value of the new name parameter. Now let's look at this second one. We've got a variable named 2 of type robot2. We make a new instance of robot2, but we have no arguments here, so it's going to go to the constructor with no parameters. Now this is an example of using the this command. And what that does is, in this situation, this is going to call another constructor. So it's looking for a constructor that has one string parameter. So it goes to this one. It passes the string wall -E, So it'll set fuel source equal electricity. And it'll set name equal to new name, which happened to equal wall -E in this case. So let's look at another example where we can run into a problem overloading constructors. Okay, so now we have a class called Robot Confused, and we have a class called Alien Planet. So, we've got our two fields, and we've got two constructors. Now, these constructors both have two strings. The strings have different names in the parameters, but it's two strings. This is a problem, because when we want to create an instance, we're passing two strings. Our compiler doesn't know, do we want to use this constructor or this constructor? It could legitimately be either. So, robot confused won't even build because when the compiler tries to create an instance, it's not going to be able to know which constructor we want to use. So that sums up part one of our lesson on constructors in Java. For further reading, you can check out this website from Oracle. Also, if you want to get to it, you can just type in providing constructors for your classes Oracle into Google, and the first result that comes up will be this website. In a future lesson, we will talk more about how constructors work with inheritance.